Hello everybody, Dr Octobeard here with my top tips for making great games. In 2015 I completed my PhD thesis in Call of Duty and I've been teaching games design ever since. I'm a published researcher in the field of game studies and last month I even contributed to a book. I've also helped a lot of students make a lot of games over the years and I've seen the good, the bad, and the truly strange. In these short videos, I will share the most important things that I have learned about games design and what you need to avoid in order to make great games. In this first video, I'll be talking about how you can make your game both fun and challenging. There are more than a few theories about what makes games, games, but all good games must have at least three things. Objectives, obstacles, and mechanics. Take this example from the 2018 game Overcooked 2. In the game, the player plays a team of chefs trying to prepare food. Ingredients can be found across the level, sometimes requiring chefs to collaborate to succeed. These ingredients need to be cooked in the right combinations and the food delivered to customers in order to score points. Score enough points and you can pass the level with 1 star, 2 star or 3 star success. The mechanics of the game involve moving, picking up, preparing and serving food. Mechanics tend to be the things that the player is able to do. The control system, if you will. For instance, picking something up to hold in front of you is different from picking something up to put in your backpack or inventory. Knowing which one you want before you start making the game is very important. In Overcooked 2, the objectives are clear. A video game objective is what the player needs to do to progress through the game. In this game, it's prepare food by mixing ingredients. At the start of every level, the player is shown which ingredients they need to mix to make which food. This information is also reinforced in-game. The obstacles are what stops the player from just being able to win the game straight away with no effort. In this case, the obstacles include a timer, which is always counting down, the fact that some of the ingredients are kept in separate, blocked off parts of the kitchen, meaning switching between characters or getting a friend's help in multiplayer will be essential. Add to this moving floors, burning food, and in one level, a crashing hot air balloon. and there's enough mayhem going on to keep the experience of playing quite frantic and fun. If we compare Overcooked 2 with something like 2020's Streets of Rage 4, then we can see that even though the games have different mechanics, objectives and obstacles, these three things are still present. Streets of Rage 4 is a sequel to the highly successful Streets of Rage series from the 1990s. The player chooses from a range of characters who have to make it through different levels, beating up as many bad guys as they can along the way. The mechanics of the game involve moving, punching, kicking, throwing and other individual special moves. The screen moves sideways when the player clears each section, a mechanic that gives this genre its name of side-scrolling beat-em-up. The objectives are to reach the end of each level, and, by doing so, to reach the end of the last level and beat the game. There's a story about defeating a crime syndicate that's laid over the top of these objectives, but in pure game terms, it's beat up the enemies, progress to the end of the level, defeat the end of level boss, don't die. The obstacles are, of course, the enemies, each of whom has different strengths and different strategies that will, and most definitely will not, work against them. There is no time limit, but players have a set amount of health and a fixed number of lives to succeed. Once these resources run out, it's curtains, I'm afraid. Every game needs these three things. Mechanics, objectives, obstacles. 
Sometimes they will draw on what the player already knows about that genre, like that winning shooters involves aiming and shooting a gun. Sometimes they will teach the player something entirely new, like moving in time with the beat. Deciding on what your mechanics, objectives and obstacles will be is often the first hurdle in planning. And one of the most common reasons I've seen student games fail is because those three things aren't clear in the designers' heads before they start. In the next video, I take a look at difficulty, player punishment and progression through the game and the difference between all three. Thanks for watching. Now let's play some more Crypt of the Necrodancer. <laughs>